Julius Fester Martha here in Berlin, where I'm with James from North America. Uh, for starters, could you tell me something about the Chains? It's a pretty new band, right? Yeah, uh, Change started last year. Uh, I got the idea to finish some songs that I had had completed musically, but I hadn't put lyrics to. And uh, I called up some friends and said, hey, I, I want to work on these songs. And I went into the studio with our friend Jesse Gander in Vancouver, BC, where I live. And I started working on the songs slowly, you know, building them up, getting different ideas. And I finished the record earlier. Actually, you know, I finished the record late last year. And then I kind of sat on it for a while. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. And then I played it for Robert, who does Refuse Records here in Germany. And I also played it for Evan, who does React Records in the States. And just said, hey, you know, I finished this record. I'm not sure if I want to do anything with it. And they were both very encouraging and said, like, no, you got to put this out. And it took a while for me to really get the courage up to put out the record. I had to think about it for a long time. And then finally I said, okay, like, let's do it. Let's put it out. Uh, but if historically, if anyone has ever followed anything that I do, whether it's musically or whether it's in my professional career, I don't really do things halfway. So I don't just kind of do something and then let it sit. I, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to put effort behind it. So I felt if I was going to put out the record, I was always also going to go on tour with it. And so here we are in, uh, in Europe. Okay. And, uh, the, People who recorded the album, uh, it's a different lineup than well, who's touring right now, yeah. correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah, who's uh, on the tour? <laughs> okay, so uh, first I'll tell you the story about what happened. Uh, I recorded the record with Dave Mitchell, um, who played in Blue Monday, and he played in Burden, and he played in Keep It Clear. And then Alex uh, Scholen, who also played in Keep It Clear, and he plays in Punitive Damage and Prescriptions now. And then also Carl uh, Mc, McBeath, who, um, sorry, Carl McBeth, who plays in, played in Damages. He was in Keep It Clear. Um, he was in a band called Circles. And now he's in a band called Tilted and also in a band called Apple White with Dave Mitchell as well. Those are his, his new bands. Um, we recorded the songs and we sat on them for a long time. And when I decided to finish them, Um, we got together in the studio and worked on them together really well and it was cool. But afterwards there was this sense of like, you know, it just kind of became my band and, um, those guys are still really good friends. They might play with the lineup later on. Uh, but for this lineup, when I had the record, I sent it to Chris, who is our guitar player, uh, now our guitar player. And Chris is one of my oldest friends. We've played in bands together forever. And Chris was like, Hey, I want to play on this. And then Mike, who's our other guitar player, is just a, another really close friend of mine. And he listened to it and he's like, wow, I'd really like to play. And then then came Matt and there came Jeff. So all of them together playing different bands. Uh, Jeff is in Odd Man Out and he's also in a band uh, called Angel Dust. And then the rest of the guys also all play in lots of bands as well. Okay, the album is called Closer Still. Mm -hmm. So um, can you tell me something about this album? At least uh, one song mm -hmm. deals with depression. Mm -hmm. Are the, what are the themes? So thematically, the idea closer still is about um, not running away from painful situations. And, um, you know, when, when people experience something bad, and I don't mean like, you know, you got in a car accident or, you know, you, you lost your iPhone. I don't mean bad like that. I mean like really bad, like something that causes you trauma or something that breaks your confidence. The, I, the album is about not running away from things and instead whatever hurt you whatever has crushed you whatever's upset you it's about getting closer to that and um, get closer to it until it hurts and then get closer still get even closer so that you can understand it and you can understand what hurt you you can work through it um, you can process it and in doing that you can understand more about yourself so you can use that that pain not to keep you angry or keep you afraid, but to empower you to become a better person and do more. And so that's why it's called Closer Still. If you want to run away, go back and don't just get close, get closer still. Uh, so the whole record is about that in different ways. And it's about that on an individual level. It's about that on a community level. And it's also about that in a society uh, level in terms of we live in a 
a time right now that's very marked by division and um, anger and hostility. And we are seeing a rise of racism. We're seeing a rise of transphobia, homophobia. We're seeing a rise of um, uh, people quite openly using uh, power to hold other people down and silence their voices. And I really believe like this is a communal pain. So the people who are being oppressed feel pain, but the oppressors feel pain. They don't realize it, but they're acting from a place of pain. Like all hatred comes from pain. And uh, the idea here is that we have to get closer still. We don't. We shouldn't run away. We should get closer still and try and work through these things. Um, and sometimes we have to work through them through dialogue. And sometimes we have to work through them through conflict. And uh, But we can't run away. And so that's what it's about from you know, the individual to the community to that kind of a global space. Okay, and uh, you're a straight edge band, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, yep. we're a straight edge uh, vegetarian band. Okay, so uh, well, for starters, uh, I'm interested. Uh, how is the straight edge scene back home? Well, okay, so we're from two different cities, right? The Seattle and uh, and Vancouver. Um, both are awesome. Like both are good. I think it's a bit more um, uh, active in, uh, in terms of specifically about straight edge in Seattle, but both cities have great scenes, like awesome scenes. And the two scenes are very close as well. So there's a lot of people play in bands in Seattle or they play in bands in Vancouver. Uh, it's great. Lots of activism, lots of good thinking, uh, lots of critical conversations. Like it's, it's good. It's a good open space. Um, from the straight edge scene specifically, I mean, That's, you know, that's kind of like where I came up and, uh, there's a lot of cool bands. Uh, there's a brand new band called Chopping Block. That's really, really, really good. Um, so that's awesome. And then in Vancouver, there's a lot of uh, cool bands. There's a great band called Punitive Damage that we're real close with. Um, and, uh, Mike, our guitar players in that. So it's awesome. Lots of great shows, lots of great ideas. Uh, I do want to speak about vegetarian and veganism if I can for a sec. Um, so We're a vegetarian band, but not all the members of the band are vegetarian. And I want to be real specific about that. So everyone's straight edge. And mo like four-fifths of the band, like most of us are vegan, one of us is vegetarian, and one of, them, uh, one of us isn't. And the reason I'm saying this is I used to play in this band called The First Step when I was younger. And when I joined The First Step, I wasn't vegetarian. But The First Step was a vegetarian band. And the guitar player Aaron said to me, The first steps vegetarianism isn't about setting up boundaries or barriers between people. It's about encouraging. It's like, I want you to play in this band, even though you're not vegetarian, because I want to encourage, you know, a dialogue about vegetarianism. And it really like it actually got me into vegetarianism. And change is a band that I want to encourage dialogue about vegetarianism and veganism. Like I take veganism and vegetarianism really serious. It's I think it's a, a profoundly important thing. And I don't want someone to listen to this or listen to our record or see on, us on stage and be like, oh, these people like are jerks. So they don't, you know, they don't want to talk about it. I do want to talk about it. And I want to like spend time with you. And I also want you to feel like honored, uh, like, uh, like that I'm honoring that you're different. And I want to have that dialogue about uh, vegetarian and vegetarianism and veganism, because I believe like every day we get up and we have this really simple choice that we could make. Like you and I could just choose to not do things, right? We could choose to go down one street. We could choose to take our car or not take our car. We could choose to eat at a certain restaurant. And these, these choices are pretty benign. They're not big choices, but we have this choice every day. And it's like, just, you could just decide to not do something. And it, you have this choice every day to not eat animals. And the impact of that is literally something doesn't die. And that's like a, this hugely profound thing, but we don't think about it that way because it's just, you know, hey, I'm going to turn left this way instead of right. I'm going to, today I'm going to have a ham sandwich instead of like, you know, whatever else. And I, I really want to draw the attention to being vegetarian or vegan is as simple as just saying, eh, I'm not going to do that now. And it just reduces suffering. And there's, there's more than enough suffering in this world. We should reduce suffering if we can. So uh, it's an important subject for me and one that I'd encourage anybody to talk to me about any time and I'm super psyched to talk about it. Okay, cool. And um, well, uh, back to the scene back home. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you, uh, you know, school me a bit more? Uh, how is the history of the scene back there? Mm -hmm. What can you tell me? Okay, so I'll start. I'll talk about Vancouver because that's yeah. where I'm from. Yeah. Um, so Vancouver punk scene is awesome. Like it comes from like a cool lineage. So there's a band called DOA 
Uh, they started off as the Skulls, and they're kind of like the epicenter of all of that. And there were a lot of other, other bands around at the time, uh, but they coined the term hardcore. So the term hardcore comes from DOA, which is kind of like this weird Canadian factoid that any Canadian punk would tell you. Like, that's like our claim to fame. Like, yeah, we, you know, our, our, our band came up with that. Our team came up with that. Um, so it started out like there's DOA, uh, Subhumans, um, that led into like later generations, like one of the greatest bands that ever came out of Vancouver. Hey, you got to get your money, man. Uh, one of the greatest bands that ever came out of Vancouver is a band called Death Sentence. And they have this LP called Not a Pretty Sight, which is like, forget about it. It's the coolest. Uh, you know, and then like, there's like just lots of cool bands over the years, an incredible hardcore band called Strain and Strain was like one of those bands that really helped like later era hardcore uh, happen and like, uh, Strain toured Europe a bunch of times. It's cool, man. Like, it's just great. And, um, so Blue Monday was an incredible band, band from there, but right now I'd say like the band that I'm most excited about, there's two punitive damage who, who are just sick. They're totally awesome. And then this band called juice and like, they're kind of on different spectrums. Like punitive damage is like really fast and abrasive. And then juice is kind of like more like groovy, grooved out, kind of like hard, hardcore. They're really good. Um, Seattle on, on the flip side. I mean, Seattle's just like got a legendary scene, so many cool bands, but I want to give a big shout out to brotherhood. Uh, brotherhood kind of like helped start the hardcore thing there. And the singer Ron Gardepi died last year, uh, passed away from cancer. So shout out to brotherhood. Um, and then, you know, of course, you got to give a huge shout out to Undertow, which is an incredible band. And from there, it just grew. Lots of cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how is it for you, you know, uh, to tour around the world and see other scenes? Mm -hmm. uh, it's great, man. Like, so I, I've played for a long time. So I've played in a bunch of different bands over the years. And uh, I've been able to go to uh, Europe. This is like my 15th or 16th time, like touring Europe or being around. And... Uh, I've been to like Central America, all over North America, um, Japan, Australia, South Korea, Puerto Rico. Um, I'm forgetting some stuff, but it's, it's cool. There's nothing like it, like being able to go to a different country and be immersed in a different culture and really learn from them and be around, uh, Aren't all boxes square? <laughs> um, um, <laughs> it's really cool being in in other cultures because it it gives you this real sense of place. Like, it first it reminds you of like how tough North America is because North America is like a real grind. You know, like there's such economic intensity and there's such a intensity about how people live. Where you can come to Europe and it's like there's really the art of how to live here. Like it's a real focus on enjoying life and like in being of, of, of use to the world where North America, you get this real sense of like, make a lot of money, buy a lot of stuff, you know, die one day. And that's about it. So it, it really gives you your sense of your place in the world. It also shows you like just the economic injustice of like all these different countries and the struggles they live in. It's a great crash course on how people really live outside of verse, outside of just like reading it in a book. Uh, I encourage people like when you're done school, travel 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 and understand the realities of other people because it really helps you understand how you should spend your time in terms of where you want to put your energy and how you can help so it's been awesome i love touring i love being on the road um, i have a young daughter now who's 20 months so i don't get to do it often uh, so i try and make those times special yeah yeah uh, back to uh, a bit to straight edge uh, what is the meaning of straight edge to you um okay thank you yeah to me is that's important because whatever man like things are like subjective and contextual people are going to believe what they want to believe you've got people who are like real aggressive about straight edge and people who are like whatever about it um uh, for me it's all about yourself it's not about putting things on other people so i don't smoke i don't drink i don't do drugs and i've made a commitment i'm not going to do that throughout my life um, but for me, straight edge is like a, a foundation. It's not a destination. So I'm not about saying like I'm straight edge and I'm a good person because I've met a lot of people who are straight edge who are like terrible, they act poorly and all of that. And I've had people like that close to me and it's, it's, it's been tough to deal with. Um, 
and I don't want to say because I'm straight edge, I'm a, I'm a good person. Straight edge has allowed me to clear my mind enough so that I can work on being a really good person. So for me, it's a foundation where I can like keep climbing to getting better and better and better versus a, de- a destination where I say, okay, I've done all the work I need to do. Okay, and lastly, uh, what are your future plans for change? Well, LP is going to come out in the spring, and um, we got a bunch of shows booked, and I just want to tour and, and have fun and meet people. But also, like, I, I run my own company, and I have, like, you know, a kid, a real life, so I also, like, I'm going to do what I can with the band. Uh, but we'll definitely be back in Europe this summer, um, and then we're going to do a bunch of other touring this year. Okay, thank you so much. Now, thank you.